Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to day three of the NWR Small Cap Investor Conference. Uh, on the line today, we have management from Swift Media. Um, now, Swift is uh, a specialist technology company which has been in operations for about 12 years now. It's, it's uh, a company that delivers premium entertainment, communications and advertising to an audience of more than 5 million people via 60,000 digital assets across the nation. Uh, the company has a targeted number of end, end markets, including mining and resources, uh, residential aged care and uh, health and wellbeing. Um, so on the line today, uh, we have uh, Kirsty Davison uh, operating the slides, and um, Kirsty is the Chief Customer and Strategy Officer. We've got Jeff Greenberg, the CFO, and we have Pippa Leary, who's the CEO of the company. So Pippa joined Swift uh, in July last year after a, a, a tenure heading up Channel 9's digital sales team, where she was responsible for the key online properties, including Nine.com.au, Nine Honey, and their broadcast video on demand platform, Nine Now. Um, prior to that, Pippa was CEO of Fairfax Nine Programmatic Exchange Apex, um, held senior executive roles at Fairfax Media, uh, including MD of their digital media dis, uh, division. Um, Pippa is also an experienced board director, serving on the advisory boards of the RLPA and UCAST. Um, for any attendees on the call, uh, certainly welcome all questions which you can submit by the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom panel and following the presentation we uh, will jump into those. So without further ado, Pippa, I'll hand things over to you. Go ahead, Pippa. Thanks, Tim. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and taking, thanks for taking the time to be here on a Friday afternoon. As Tim said, um, it's been a little over 12 months since I started at Swift and during that time we've made a lot of changes to the business. We've made really good progress, strengthening, streamlining and expanding our market opportunities in order to position ourselves for long-term growth. So I'll go through some of these slides just to you know, give you the background on that. And then at the end, we'll, we'll move to the questions. So to those of you who are unfamiliar with Swift, it's a specialist technology company that provides entertainment and communication solutions that connect and engage isolated communities. So we supply into what we call closed loop environments. The easiest way to think of us is like the entertainment system on a plane, except one where either the airline or the pilot gets to communicate one-to-one -one with every passenger using the TV screen. Like other tech companies, we have high barriers to entry and 70% of our revenue is subscription-based and recurring. Um, typically these contracts are three to five years and what's interesting about them is that it's the facility owner who pays the fee to view, not the end user. Swift basically has two big growth opportunities. The first is we're a leveraged play on the mining and resources capex boom. It's a, about a $40 billion boom that's playing out over the next four years. The second one is we are leveraged to the reforms post the Royal Commission and the COVID recovery in aged care. Um, we, we really like aged care because there are really strong structural tailwinds due to the aging population. So if you look at our three core verticals, um, we compete in mining and resources, in aged care and health and wellbeing. What we do differently is we customise, we have very unique technology and then we customise it to meet the different needs of customers in each of these verticals. So for example, we allow mining companies to entertain and communicate with their FIFO workers, either by showing them really early release Hollywood blockbusters, we're on the same release schedule as an, as an aeroplane. Um, we show them live sport or, or free to air television. But importantly, we also build a communication system that's very much like a hotel compendium and it's capable of sending the mine workers individualized messaging that can be around OHS, it can be around a change in the flight schedule to Carafa, at what's on in the mine, it sort of it builds community. It also can be around mine safety. Um, it can also be around an individual mine workers safety certifications. And we also do a lot in minor mental health. Um, this has become a huge issue due to the social isolation on these remote mines. In some cases, we work with the traditional owners and we create specific indigenous content that is um, all about that mine location. 
and then the FIFO workers watch it like a trailer before they consume other content on the system. Um, and you know, I do, probably don't need to go into why that's so important at this <laughs> stage of the game. In aged care, we operate quite differently. We've built a fit for purpose product that solves for social isolation by connecting 80 to 95 year old residents with their families and their loved ones using technology they know and understand. And that is the TV set. We literally tune 10 new channels onto their TV sets. So it's a simple channel up, channel down experience. Not only um, engages them and entertains them, it allows the facility to communicate with these often immobile and bed bound, room bound um, residents. The core idea behind Swift Plus is to cost effectively improve the 15 hours of awake time that these residents have in these aged care facilities. What we found is that this age group really struggle with mobile phones and tablets. Interactivity is, is, is really quite difficult for them, not for us, but for them. That's why we've chosen to build it around the TV set. And then finally, in the health and, uh, the health and wellness vertical, we acquired a digital out of home advertising business um, which owns 30% of the screens in GP waiting rooms all over Australia. So this deal was done just prior to my arrival. Uh, when I got here, that business was burning cash. We've now worked to remediate the business and it's now profitable. So on this next slide, um, we wanted to just kind of illustrate, uh, use one of our key clients as a case study, just to demonstrate what we provide and some of the barriers to entry when we supply services in these remote locations. So this is a, an image of Corona, Corona Downs from Atlas Iron. It's, it, you know, by the way of iron ore mines, it's a small mine. It's only 136 rooms. Um, we do much bigger mines than this. What's interesting about Corona Downs is it's fairly typical. It's 240 kilometers from Port Hedland. It's nowhere near a town. Um, we provide wireless internet out to this mine, and that's used in the village for all the work emails, calling home, and obviously just recreational use. But you'll also see that um, little mountain that they've got to get through. These are some of the issues when we're laying fibre and we're cabling in. This is the sort of stuff that we have to deal with. It's tricky and expensive, but this is definitely one of SWIFT's core spurts. Then we use that internet that we've cabled out to the village and that's how we provide the on-demand movie, entertainment and communication services. Um, so once we're in, we're in for the next three to five years. Um, once we're embedded, it's incredibly low churn. Last quarter, we renewed 100% of our client contracts. Um, if we go to the next page, we can have a little look at what our growth opportunity is in mining and resources. In mining and resources, we operate in a market of around 140,000 remote rooms. Um, our sweet spot obviously is remote villages because we cable out to them. Of that, we've currently got about a 21% market share. So lots of room for growth. We're very well capitalized. Um, we're very well placed to capitalize on that $40 billion mining CapEx boom, especially in iron ore and gold. We have a dominant position in iron ore. Um, but gold is interesting to us. What we're seeing at the moment, um, because gold prices are so high, there's a lot of demand to refurbish the older gold mines. So we're getting a lot of knocks on our doors to go in and just go through and do a complete refurb because they were first built, internet wasn't kind of a big thing. Now to attract workers, you must have high speed internet. Importantly, we're also turning our attention to copper and lithium because these two mineral, uh, these two commodities are going to fuel the carbon neutral energy boom. What's interesting about all of iron ore, gold, copper and lithium, they're all mined remotely. We're also further refining our platform to enhance its ability to meet the compliance requirements for the mines. So there's a lot of requirements around OHS, um, and increasingly there, is, there are requirements around minor mental health. Um, as I said, we're doing a lot of, um, uh, making a lot of content, specific content around um, traditional owners. Um, we're doing this because it makes us a must have in terms of mine compliance. It allows the mine to tick off quite a lot of their compliance um, requirements. We're also expanding into adjacent markets. So we're expanding into exploration, mobile, rail and road camps. These are really important because these mobile camps precede the permanent camps. And this allows us to move much earlier in the mine life cycle. 
we have a much higher chance of winning the long-term permanent mine if we've provided um, all the communications and entertainment into the mobile mine that preceded it. And as a result of recent improvements in our delivery and support functions, we're seeing significant increase in tender activity because our reputation has improved. Um, in Q1 of FY21, we saw a 28% increase from the prior corresponding period. The next vertical that we like to play in is aged care. Aged care is an umbrella term and it encompasses three things. Residential care, what most people know as nursing homes, in-home care and retirement villages. We've chosen to focus initially on residential care. There are over 220,000 rooms in this sector. Why we chose this one, less than 15% are serviced by anything other than free-to-air TV. We also like this sector because it has strong structural growth. COVID and the Royal Commission have highlighted the social isolation issue and our new fit for purpose product we call SWIFT Plus solves for this. Um, interestingly, despite the access restrictions that we have experienced during COVID, um, we were still able to sell and onboard SWIFT Plus into 800 new rooms across five different aged care facilities. They included Applewood, Riverview, Adventist Care, Ross Moyne Waters, IRT and Andrew Kerr. Off the back of COVID, we've also created a mobile platform, or an app that allows facilities to communicate easily with the families of their residents who have been completely cut off through lockdown. We know that these residents, again, struggle with mobile phones, struggle with, with tablets. So we've built something that is incredibly easy for them to use. Also, as we've seen restrictions lift in WA and South Australia, we've begun to much more aggressively um, start doing outbound marketing in those two states. And already this has resulted in a flurry of new sales opportunities. So we can, which we can see accelerating as the Eastern states begin to move out of lockdown. If we go on to the next page, there's, um, this is just a little bit about um, SWIFT Plus and why we, why we built it. If you look in the blue box, it really kind of goes through the insights that we gained um, and why we built it. The importance of SWIFT Plus is that it demonstrates that we develop our own proprietary technology. We're not a reseller of anyone else's tech. Last year, um, Kirsty's on the line. Her team introduced a new agile product development process to SWIFT. And using the insights that she gained from doing a lot of primary research into the needs of the residents, her and her team were able to build the new SWIFT Plus system from start to finish in under six months. And what we're finding is that this technology is expanding our addressable markets. So the value of this tech is that it's flexible, it's perfectly suited to communicating and engaging residents who are isolated, be that due to health restrictions, as we've seen in aged care, or geography, as we're beginning to see in those uh, remote exploration camps. But now we're beginning to see isolation due to quarantine restrictions. So we've recently won the contract to supply the SWIFT Plus technology to Howard Springs, which is the government's quarantine facility in the Northern Territory. With 29,000 stranded Australians looking to return home, we expect to see these facilities expand really quite quickly. So as I said, um, you know, this last 12 months, super busy, uh, strengthening and streamlining the business. Now we're beginning to see the fruits of our labour. Um, in Q1 FY21, we saw 160% growth in EBITDA year on year. Very happy with that. We're also seeing margin expansion, um, EBITDA, got up to 5% in that first quarter. You can see on the graph, it's moving in the right direction. Revenue was up 5.9, which was 23% on Q4 FY20. The really strong growth came out of mining and resources. COVID did not affect mining, as most of you from Western Australia know, it just went into full swing. We saw our revenue increase 50% over Q4 FY20 and 30% over the prior corresponding period. Importantly, we saw 200% um, growth in project revenue, which is a lead indicator of recurring revenue. The business's cash flow continued to improve. We're effectively operating cash flow break even for that quarter, which um, was a huge improvement on the prior quarter in which we'd been negative 1.5 million. Um, a lot of this is due to the work of Jeff, our new CFO and his team. They have um, demonstrated incredibly prudent um, management of our cash resources and we ended the quarter with 1.9 in cash reserves. But <laughs> while we currently operate in those three verticals, we have much stronger growth ambitions. So we've created this slide, um, actually we just released it to the SX yesterday. 
We feel that after a very important period of restructuring, we now have the confidence to look forward and to provide an aspirational growth target. So in 2025, our target is to triple the revenues of our, growth, uh, of our group organically. Clearly, any acquisitions would be on top of this. So how are we going to achieve this? Two key growth strategies. Number one, increase our share in existing markets. And we're well on our way to doing that um, and extend into adjacent markets. So in 2025, we expect to have three times the market share that we have in aged care today. Again, because there's no incumbent, that makes us a little more confident there. And then expand to having 27% from 21% of the rooms in mining and resources. We've also started to build very, we will also have started to build good footholds in the adjacencies of retirement villages, in home care, and interestingly, aged care in New Zealand. It's almost identical to aged care in Australia, and we've already kind of reached out and made contact with the big players over there. These are all going to be our additional sources of long-term growth. So in conclusion, we expect our revenue of 23 million FY20 to be around 70 million in 2025. As I said, we have strong growth ambitions. We aim to be a much larger company and we're building for the future. Today, even our sales pipes, our pipelines are far stronger than they were six months ago. And we feel this sets us up for really strong growth in 2021. So why don't I close there and open up to questions for either myself, Kirsty or Jeff? Excellent. Thanks, Pippa. Very nice presentation. And that's a compelling growth story, I should say. So um, we've had a few questions come in, so I'll hop straight in. Um, any further questions that uh, you'd like to ask, attendees can put them into the Q&A box at the bottom of your Zoom panel. So Pippa, it's been a busy time of product development since you joined the company. So is the product suite now where you would like it to be? Or should we expect <laughs> to see further product launches in the year ahead? Product suites are never where you want them to be because nothing ever stays the same. You know, you know, our customers' needs are changing all the time. So it is literally an iterative uh, process. Fortunately, Kirsty's brought in a really agile um, product development process. And we've got a lot of emphasis. She's brought a real emphasis to the company on being very customer focused. And what that means for us is going back and checking in all the time. Is this what you need? What else do you need? How are your needs changing? So when we put a system in with a client, we follow that up with a lot of account management. And one of the functions of our account managers is to be gathering more information about how the system is being used, what data we can take back to the client to either make it, make it better for them or give us an indication of how we can rebuild the next iteration to be more effective for them as well. So it's, it's, it's a constant loop. Um, will we go into a position where we kind of down tools and build some massive product? Probably we don't need to do that. Uh, now that we've built Swift Plus, we feel very confident that we've got a really um, easy to use and cost effective system that suits facilities in aged care that don't have really strong um, network connection or good, good Wi-Fi. So we can really got a solution for that part of um, the industry. Then there's the part of the industry which is retirement villages and high-end facilities. They're being built at the moment um, and they have much better network connectivity. We would more likely use our set-top box solution for them because um, we can do a more individualised room by room by room solution. So we kind of, in aged care, we've got products that meet both the needs. In mining and resources, um, Kirsty's team is underway. They're, they're doing a huge piece talking to all of the mining companies, tier one, tier two, tier three, facility managers and the building companies. And they're asking them the question, what do you, what are your needs in the next five years? And we're literally compiling this hierarchy of needs. And then we will be iterating and improving um, the current system and making sure that we step ahead of whatever's coming. Excellent. Thanks, Pippa. Um, <laughs> Um, are you able to talk about the difference in the sales cycle of aged care versus the mining camps and the various procurement processes? Yeah, sure. So mining's interesting. For a permanent camp, um, you're looking at about an 18-month sales cycle. Um, obviously, for the mobile camps, they are, they're, they're going out there as exploration camps and we can actually um, make contact with a mining company um, 
bid and install an exploration camp in sub three months. And we've done that a couple of times with Swift Plus. That's why we love that product. Um, but what's interesting is, you know, you'll have Swift Plus in um, an exploration camp for six to nine months. The whole time you're talking with the mining company and with the facility managers and the builders about when they're going to push the button on the permanent camp. Um, but that is definitely an 18 month, uh, 18 month process. Um, it's very rare that you will get anything um, quicker than that. That being said, we get a lot of work in terms of what we call variations. So what we do is we, we, um, we're very unique in this business because we do the design and construct. We supply the communication platform permanently. That's, that's, you know, that, that's what we get our recurring revenue from, but we also um, supply ongoing support. So we keep our three guys permanently living in the Pilbara because that's where most of our minds are at the moment. Um, and what's interesting is we do site audits and we do safety audits and we keep doing site audits. When we go in and do the site audits, what happens is um, our guys will see something that's broken or not working or can be improved. It generates a lot of variation work for us. That's very short and that tends to happen within the quarter. So we have to balance very long-term revenue, now shorter revenue with the rail cams, with really short revenue from uh, variations. And as long as we, you know, are smart about the way we do that, we make sure that we can, um, we, we get really solid forecasts out of that sales team. Very good, thanks Pepper. Um, just looking to the past sort of six months, um, can you comment on how COVID-19 has impacted your ability to extend your reach specifically into the aged care sector? And has that sort of abated now around Australia? That has definitely been a challenge for us. So we built, um, as I said, we built the SWIFT Plus system in sub six months. Um, Kirstie's team did an incredible job. Um, ironically, we launched it, you know, we finished it and had it ready to take to the market. And we had all these launch breakfasts and you know all this market activity planned. We finished it on the 16th of March and by the 23rd of March, everything was closed down. Um, so, you know, I would be lying if I said it hadn't impeded us. It, it definitely did, um, especially in that first, um, that first six months, um, so many of the aged care facilities, especially after New March, and then what happened in um, Victoria, their number one concern, rightly so, was biosecurity. Um, what we are seeing now is that as they're beginning to come out of it, clearly they're out of it in, in South Australia and Western Australia, which is why we pivoted all of our sales activity over there. On the Eastern Seaboard, what we're seeing is that they're coming out bruised. They are definitely bruised. Um, they definitely want, there's a real desire to improve the quality of life for their residents. SWIFT Plus is a really cost-effective way to do that. It's basically 10 times the functionality of, of Foxtel at a fifth of the price. So everyone's interested in it. What we are finding is they're a little gun shy about entering into five-year projects. Um, COVID has really turned their worlds upside down. So a lot of our conversations now are, um, you know, how can we help them um, and how can we amortise the cost of a five-year contract with us to make it more palatable for them? So we're exploring all of those options. Sounds good. Thanks, Pippa. Um, the last couple of slides in the deck sketched out some ambitious growth, uh, growth plans. Um, the question that's come in is how much does your cost base have to rise to achieve your FY25 revenue ambitions? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, look, we keep a very, very close eye on our margins. Clearly, if we're going to go for that kind of top line growth, um, we feel like our products are really uh, set up and are right. This is going to be a sales play. This is, this is a sales and marketing play. So I don't see that we're going to have to... Um, you know, spend millions of dollars in CapEx to, to build new products. Um, we are going to need to expand our sales capabilities and our marketing capabilities. But the way we've, we've got that um, 
projected out is that we have milestones we need to hit in sales. And once we hit that milestone, then we double, then we go, okay, it's time for a new salesperson. We understand how long it takes for each new salesperson to get out and then start generating sales. So it's literally a matter of timing. So we just follow up behind each of those. And the same thing for when we get a new sale, um, we have to make sure that we've got an, enough account managers. So we've been, you know, at the moment, we're, we're keeping it fairly lean, but as the sales start rolling in, then we start expanding those. But we will always keep our eye on our margins. And, you know, we've had to demonstrate really, really um, strong cost discipline, especially to get a result like 160% growth in EBITDA uh, year on year. So I'm really confident that this team, um, as, as that top line increases, we won't lose our heads and go crazy and just keep spending, spending, spending. We've got a very clear plan that runs behind that. Sounds good. Thanks, Pippa. Um, sticking with the growth profile, do you expect to continue to focus on organic growth opportunities or would you look to augment this with strategic m and should the right opportunities arise? We'll always look at strategic m and um, You know, you'd be a fool not to. So, um, you know, there's, there's a number of opportunities that we're already looking at. Um, you know, there are some consolidation opportunities. Um, there are strategic partnership opportunities. Believe me, we look at all of them, but we, we never have a closed door to that. So um, where it makes sense, where we think that um, an M&A opportunity, we, where we can see strong revenue synergies or strong cost synergies, we'll always pursue that. Um, none of us are really precious about kind of defending our territory. It's more, how do we, how do we improve shareholder value? We'll do anything that does that. Very good. Um, so just taking a step back, um, what would you like investors to view as UK success metrics over the balance of FY21 and beyond? <laughs> That's a really good question, actually. Uh, recurring revenue is really, really important to us. What we think is... Um, you know, we, 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 we definitely chase recurring revenue. We chase high margin recurring revenue. Um, rooms are somewhat of a proxy for recurring revenue, but it's not always one-to-one. -one. But um, for investors, I think rooms are probably a good proxy. Um, they all obviously need to be um, watching uh, the rate of our contract wins. Um, and then obviously our ability to exercise cost discipline while at the same time chasing that top line growth. Very good. Thanks very much, Pippa. Um, that concludes the Q&A component of our presentation today. So I really want to thank all of our attendees for tuning in and listening to the Swift story today. And really want to thank Kirsty and Jeff and Pippa for, uh, for t sketching out the exciting Swift media growth story. So thanks very much. And Pippa, I might pass back to you for any um, parting remarks. Oh, yeah, I just, you know, want to thank everyone for the time. As I said before, you know, look, we, we're really proud of what we achieved in 2020. We're really much more excited about um, FY21. We're focusing on accelerating revenue growth. We want to win more market share. And then we really want to start expanding in those adjacent verticals. Um, and uh, we intend to grow this into a much larger company going forward. So thanks for your time. Excellent. Thanks very much, Pippa. And thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll catch you soon.